It's battery fire season again here in India, and the most recent company to have one of these battery fires is Battery Smart. They had a swapping station capable of charging 50 batteries that caught fire in Delhi this last week. Luckily, in this incident, nobody was injured or killed, but two people were trapped upstairs in that building and were eventually rescued. But why did this have to happen? Well, according to one of the company's co-founders, it might have been caused by a short circuit that caused two of the batteries at that swapping station to overheat, and then the rest of the batteries caught fire and eventually the building, but that's it, that's all it takes. It's just one simple short circuit and then suddenly all of these batteries are igniting and putting people's lives at risk. And this is not the first time that this has happened with Battery Smart. In fact, it's not even the second time or the third time, it's actually the fourth time in the last 12 months that such a fire has happened. And in the past, it's been much worse. This is one of their locations in Lucknow. You can see here that there was a gym at the top of the building and then the Battery Smart outlet was there at the bottom on the street level. And actually there was 25 people in that Olympia gym when the Battery Smart outlet caught fire. Similar kind of incident, batteries were catching fire and exploding. And luckily, firefighters were able to save most of these people, but one man had rushed into the building to try to save more people and he ended up dying of smoke inhalation. So this incident happened in January of 2023, not that long ago. And this company is actually backed by Tiger Global and Bloom Ventures. And so I would imagine after this happened, those investors would have told the founders of Battery Smart that, hey, you got to get your act together. But clearly that hasn't happened. And so I want to know from you guys, leave a comment down below and let me know, do you think that this is Battery Smart's fault or is this the fault of the technology itself, battery swapping as a technology in Indian conditions? Because I actually recently interviewed someone in this space. His name is Akshay Singh. He's the founder of Log9 Materials and they are in the battery tech space. Actually, you can find the podcast podcast that I did with him up here. Definitely do check it out. A lot of people seem to have loved that episode, but Akshay has some pretty strong opinions on this battery swapping technology. This is from their newsletter in January of 2021. And I held on to this email at the time because I thought it was very interesting, but now it's actually super relevant. They talked about the advantages of rapid charging infrastructure versus battery swapping infrastructure and listed several downsides to battery swapping, including design and fire safety, saying that it requires complex thermal management, which Clearly, Battery Smart has not been able to figure out how to implement successfully or safely. Now, some of the other challenges listed in this newsletter include the high cost of charging rack infrastructure as well as float batteries. Basically, these are extra batteries that the company needs to invest in when all the batteries are out on the road. And then also battery standardization, as most batteries only work with one kind of swapping station. They aren't interchangeable across different companies and infrastructure. Then you've also got battery wear and abuse. And this is key because frequent swapping of batteries can lead to accidents of the battery and the charger. And this is actually what we're seeing with Battery Smart, you've got the degradation of the battery, which causes accidents. And then there's also potential for theft and also pilfering. Now, Log9 just had their day zero event this last Friday. And basically, this is an event where they talk about their future plans, the stuff that they're going to be working on in the next couple of years. And they also show off the tech that they've been working on in the last year. And they actually invited me to attend this event. So what ended up happening at this event was pretty monumental for India because Log9 announced that they'd finished building India's first commercial lithium ion cell manufacturing facility. And this is the key here, battery cells, not batteries. There's a pretty big difference between importing cells from other countries and then assembling them into a battery in India and actually building cells indigenously in India, which makes them a lot safer. One of the main reasons why this is so important for India's EV ecosystem is that cells have previously been coming from outside of India, and usually these cells are not designed for Indian conditions, which is one reason why you see batteries catching fire or malfunctioning on Indian roads and in Indian temperatures. Log9's battery cells, on the other hand, can be cut. They can also potentially be drilled into. I don't know why you would want to do that, but they can also be dropped from a height. Let's say a vehicle goes flying off of a flyover. They wouldn't explode then. The cells would not catch fire. And also these cells can even be cooked without exploding or catching fire. And they actually showed off at this day zero event how the batteries are made. So as you can see here, they've got some pretty incredible machinery in that new battery cell line. And Akshay actually talked about that during the podcast that he did with us at Backstage with Million 
in there. So again, I would highly recommend that you go check that podcast out. And I think that this is going to be a pretty transformative moment for India's EV industry as battery cells being manufactured in India, not outside of India, is a pretty big deal. And once the lithium from the reserve in Jammu and Kashmir begins to be extracted in, say, the next five to 10 years, the sky is the limit for this industry. Okay, so now I want to talk about Blinkit. And for those of you who are out of the loop, on the 12th of April, Blinkit revised their payment structure for their delivery partners. And this did not go over well. They announced that they were going to be reducing the minimum fee for each delivery for these delivery partners from 25 rupees to 15 rupees. And not surprisingly, thousands of Blinkit delivery partners went on strike after this happened, after Blinkit made this announcement. And the strike lasted for five days, and over 100 of Blinkit's 370 plus dark stores were temporarily shut down in Delhi, Gurugram, Noida, and Faridabad. And this was actually pretty painful for Blinkit because a lot of the people that used to use Blinkit religiously switched over to other platforms like, for example, Instamart, Big Basket, and Zepto. This resulted in a between 25 and 50% surge on these competitors' platforms, but now it seems like the dark stores are back up and running and the protest has ended with Gurugram's labor commissioner meeting with the protesters. Now, as you guys know, Zomato owns Blinkit, and that wasn't the only bad thing that happened to Zomato this week. They also ended their partnership with RBL, which had allowed RBL customers to get special credit cards with Zomato benefits, and these included a between 5 and 10% cashback on Zomato and Blinkit orders. Holders also got Zomato Pro for free, and they gained access to all major domestic airport lounges too. All right, next up, we've got some more bad news. Unfortunately, layoffs across India's startup ecosystem. And of course, this is a trend we're seeing this every single week, but I want to catch you guys up on which layoffs have happened at which startups. FanPay laid off staff. We're not sure how many. Some sources say 50. The company says less than 10, which is not a very specific number. But also, it seems like some of the top executives at the company have quit as well. BNPL startup Simple laid off 150 employees. That's about 25% of their workforce. Neo Banking Unicorn Open fired 47 employees. And all four co-founders of that company have taken a 50% pay cut. And Drip Capital, a trade financing startup, laid off 20% of their employees. That's about 75 people and gave no reason for this decision. So yeah, things are really bad in the fintech ecosystem right now. But you know what they say, buy when there's blood in the streets. There's always an advantage. There's always an opportunity when things are going downhill in a specific sector. I don't know who said that quote. It, maybe it was Warren Buffett. I'm not sure. But I would extend it further and say that if you're not an angel investor and you can't afford to buy when there's blood in the streets, then you should build when there's blood in the streets. Take advantage of the situation while you can. All right, next I want to talk about two startups that I just recently discovered in the FMB space. These are both new companies, by the way. One of them is in coffee, the other in beer. And I want to talk about the coffee one first, Ab Coffee. They're based out of Mumbai, and they're offering specialty coffee at affordable prices. They've also got this QSR spin where they're offering this coffee in 1.5 minutes. And if you're a coffee drinker, then these prices are going to surprise you. A cappuccino at 97 rupees, espresso at 77 rupees, and cold coffee at 107 rupees and up. Now, I'm over here wondering why there's no Chemex or AeroPress coffee being offered on this menu. I guess they're just focusing on espresso. But anyways, let's talk about the next startup here, Proust Beer. And they actually just finished raising a pre-series A round of $1 million. This startup is based out of Delhi, and they're going to be using these funds to expand into other states, and they're also expecting 300% growth in FY24. Now, I have a special request, and I don't know if this is legal. It might require a change of legislation in India, but I do know that legislation can be changed if you have the right contacts and you have enough influence. So maybe someone at Proust or some other brewery can make this happen. But in Canada, we have this thing called a growler, and it's not a Canadian thing. It exists all around the world. Basically, a big glass jar that you can fill up at a brewery or at at a bar and you can fill it with craft beer, whatever kind of beer you want. And it's an amazing, eco-friendly, enjoyable and personal way of enjoying beer. And this is an alternative to buying a bunch of cans or bottles full of beer, which of course causes pollution when people litter and people do litter. I just cleaned up the other day a bunch of bottles that I found lying around in this beautiful forest. People had just thrown them on the ground. And so if anybody at Proust is watching this or any beer company, maybe Beer 91, maybe you guys have the influence needed to make this happen. I would love to see growlers become a thing here in India, or at least here in Bengaluru. All right, now just a couple of quick news items for you guys. First of all, Swiggy is getting into e-commerce with Swiggy Max. 
Currently, this is exclusive to Bengaluru, and basically it's one hour delivery of things like toys, electronics, gadgets, and home and kitchen essentials. Then you've also got Axis Bank getting into e-commerce too with their own ONDC platform. They actually own 8% of ONDC, and they're gonna be foraying first into vegetable delivery. Now, speaking of vegetables, Amazon Fresh is actually still a thing in India. I didn't realize this because I live in Bengaluru, and that actually might be why I'm not aware of them because Amazon Fresh is apparently targeting tier tier two and tier three cities in India. And they're now present in 50 cities across the country. And that's a more than two X jump in the number of cities since 2022. In other news, Cred has launched their fourth product in four months. And it's this exciting new innovative technology, peer to peer payments through UPI. I know, right? Earth shattering. So it's really nothing new. They're just getting into the UPI space, I guess, very, very late. They're offering cashbacks as well. So burning even more money and you have to transfer money to your special friend. I'm not sure why that's the branding that they've come up with for this product. And then you can get this cash back, which they're calling win-win. I don't know. Cred, like, what are, you, what are you guys doing, really? All right, now let's take a look at the funding news that's happened this week in India's startup ecosystem. It really wasn't a great week, $17 million, a little more than $17 million raised across India's entire startup ecosystem, but let's take a look. For context, here's what that looks like in comparison to the first two weeks of this new financial year that we're in, FY24. And also just a reminder that you can find a link to this chart as well as all the other funding stuff that I'm gonna be talking about here in the description down below. But a few things to note here, first of all, we have our first proper AI startup raising funds this week, the first time in FY24, Switch On. They raised $4.2 million, and basically they're using computer vision to do AI-powered quality inspections of manufactured products with a high level of accuracy as compared to the human eye. Then you've got Noxense raising their pre-series A, and these guys are a Looknow-based hyper-local content startup that covers local news in Looknow, Kanpur, Indore, Goa, Mumbai, and Jaipur. And then we've also got the leader this week, Tricog. They raised $8.5 million dollars and they're combining hardware ai and medical professionals to tackle cardiovascular disease but anyways that's all the startup news that i have for you guys this week and i'll see you in the next one